how would you describe Tennessee in the Sweet 16? So I've got a couple of options for you. I'll throw them at you right now. It's celebrate. It's expected. It is lowest possible wrong. In other words, this is what you absolutely have to do each and every year. So how would you describe Tennessee in the Sweet 16? Actually, I'll just do this. Celebrate expected mandatory. There was a time in the women's game where it was pretty mandatory to make it to the Sweet 16 if you're a good coach at all. That's never been that case uh, in the men's game, but let's dive into it right now. Caleb, how would you answer that question? It is on the YouTube page. Go ahead and vote now, and we'll get you down. Caleb, how would you answer that given those three very specific answers? So expected, lowest of the wrong, and celebrate? I'm going expected. We're, we're, go we're going to make it a little easier than that. We're just going to make it ex we're going to make it celebrate, expected, mandatory. Celebrate, expected, mandatory. Okay, I will go expected. I will go expected. I won't go mandatory because I will say that I don't think that that's like a base of what you expect for Tennessee basketball every year. I think the NCAA tournament's what you expect given this history. But I will go expected, which is to say that given this team, given what we saw them do all year long, given the unique nature of Dalton Connect, I think it was perfectly fair to say that um, – to expect them to make the Sweet 16. So the fact that they did is a very good sign for them, and, and they did. I'm going to go mandatory because what I've seen this year, it is not just Tennessee as a basketball program, but it's what I have seen this year from the Vols, and I believe that it was mandatory that they get to at least the Sweet 16. If not, and I know you don't want to judge coaches off one game, but if they – had fallen short against St. Peter's, who I think tallest player is about five foot seven, or Texas, who was just horrendous. Uh, and Tennessee played well. I'm not knocking the way Tennessee played, but Texas didn't play well, and Tennessee missed a bunch of shots. To me, that's mandatory. Given what I know now, it is mandatory to be there. Given what Tennessee has, the way Dalton Connect improved throughout the season, and the fact that you had two teams that you outmatched. It's mandatory for me. You had to get there at this point. It's revisionist history because I've seen those teams and I know what Dalton Connect is, but nothing else would have been acceptable. Brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Go to Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED for 10% off. Caleb, did I do anything in that last soliloquy that might make you change your mind just a little bit because I am getting some mandatory votes. Nah, nah, it's, I still go expected. Um, I understand your mandatory point, but look, this is like a, a game like Texas is the type of game Tennessee always loses under Rick Barnes in the NCAA tournament. So I can't sit there and say that, Oh, this is to be expected. We've thought they've had different teams in the past, we have said this team is truly different. You've been saying this for a while, but I would argue that it still was, I would only go expected. Now, some might say we're splitting hairs between expected and mandatory. Is that fair to say? No, because expected, I, I can say I expect you to do this task by 10 o'clock at night, whereas if you, if it's 11, 12 at night or the next day, I mean, that's, that's understandable uh, as long as there's a decent excuse and you've got a good history of work ethic. But mandatory is when somebody uses the word mandatory, you're a little bit on the hot seat if you don't come through. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough to say. Um, I would still have gone expected. I wouldn't have Rick Barnes on the hot seat right now, even if he had not gone to the Sweet 16, because I think you have to know what Tennessee basketball is as a program. And we talk about Danny White, you know, in the past, settling on women's basketball. Well, the expectations are different depending on the sport. Tennessee, bat, men's. Getting into the NCAA tournament every year, 
that's or, or just being a perennial NCAA tournament team, that's the goal of Tennessee basketball. And that's what they are. And the truth of the matter is, I mean, I, I did more digging. I can't say for sure. Now, I do think there's a pattern and why Rick Barnes may have, had, may have had some flame outs before this year. But, I mean, he did make three lead eights in a Final Four from 2003 to 2008. So then I went back and I started to think maybe maybe it's just luck of the draw a lot of times. Maybe it's just roll of the dice and who goes far in the NCAA tournament. I mean, Mark Few has no national titles. Tony Bennett at Virginia has one. I would take Mark Few coaching in the NCAA tournament every day over Tony Bennett. I just don't think Mark Few's been as lucky as Tony Bennett in that situation. So I think Tennessee's gotten some bad draws. I wouldn't argue with you there. I also wonder if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where the NCAA selection committee says, ah, well, you know that Rick Barnes guy, we gave him a good seat at Texas a couple of times and he burned us, didn't go deep. So why should we bend over backwards to help him with a seating or a draw against Ooh, another team. That is, you, like you that? think the NCAA tournament seeds teams based on who they think will put on a good show in the sweet 16. You think they look that far ahead? I think it's human nature not to say, say that that group let us down. That group seems to do something special every year. So if there's a harder path in there, I think it's natural. You say, let's put the team that hasn't choked previously in that spot. That is very interesting, Dave. Especially when you're very. talking about the same coaches, not the same programs. Because you know, Dean Smith went forever without uh, winning, what, his second championship or went forever without it winning his first. I can't remember. But I'm talking about coaches. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about just the programs because the programs can change from time to time, Caleb. Right, right. No, I get what you're saying. That's still very interesting. Are you? So uh, you're in on this. You're down. Now I'm thinking way out ahead. Like maybe the select. I, I, because I've always wondered if the selection committee is just lazy and how they throw the brackets together. A lot of it doesn't reflect the actual body of work, and a lot of it definitely doesn't reflect the conference tournaments. But then I go back and I look. What if they're seeding based on who they think is most likely to give them the best matchups in the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight? Because they know the first two rounds, you're going to get the mat. You're everybody's going to watch anyway. The first two rounds. That's just how March Madness works. Once the Sweet 16 comes, you want the matchups that people are going to want to see. A lot of times, you do. And if you're gambling on those matchups, we know how to do it. Because if you go to Bet US, you've got the 125 percent bonus on your first three deposits plus your 10 percent gambler's insurance bet us click right below to get that incredible deal thanks to off the hook sports america's favorite sports book and casino live betting and race book we're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer a 125 percent sign up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10 percent gambler's insurance get started today bet us where the game begins all right, so my guy Caleb Calhoun has an interesting take. It's pretty strong when you first hear it, and then you say to yourself, well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that is uh, that is a good, a good take by Caleb. He's been a little bit ahead of the curve, but as far as Tennessee and the way this should be accepted – I'll ask you this in today's tough question, which is on the YouTube page. You can vote on it right now. Hit the like and subscribe button. Celebrate expected or mandatory. So I'll take mandatory off the list. Let's pretend Tennessee wins and gets to the Elite Eight. Is that celebrate or expected? Knowing what you know about this program, but also knowing what you know about these players and what they've done this year. Relative to going into the season, I would say celebrate. But relative to what we learned about this program in January, at that point, it's expected. Because I will say this team was more NCAA tournament cut out than any team I've ever seen Rick Barnes coach. I can't ignore that fact. And so given that, it goes from celebrated, I mean, to it goes from celebrated to expected. But maybe that's unfair to Rick Barnes because like this is like, Okay, so because you exceed expectations in one way, now there are new expectations placed on you, and then you fail because you didn't meet those expectations, even though those weren't the original expectations. Well, I mean, this is I'm, the... not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to pretend that we're saying 
Tennessee's athletic department feels this way. They're happy. They're not going to make any sort of goofy move. I mean, so, I, I mean, I think they're very happy. But I would say Elite Eight is to be expected based off what I've seen with this team. If Rick Barnes did not make it to the Elite Eight with this group, that would be and could still be disappointing. So, I guess – Tennessee, within the context of the season, it's like Clemson football under Dabo Swinney. They shouldn't be mad at Dabo because they never expected this type of success, but I guess they can still call it a disappointment if they're not in the college football playoff now, given what they're where they're at as a program. Yep, that's that's fair. I can roll with that. <laughs> 